All right, thanks for watching and welcome to this awesome series about dual spaces, which are very mystical creatures in linear algebra. So if you ever played Legend of Zelda, then you know that every world has a shadow world, where it turns out every vector space has a shadow space called the dual space of V. So definition, what is the dual space? It's actually something that doesn't really look like dual. It just seems like just a regular definition. So V star, so given a vector space V, we define V star to just be the set of linear transformations from V to either R or C, or any field. So space of linear transformations T from V to F. So really, what matters here is simply that the codomain, or I guess the outputs, are real numbers. And so you can imagine like this is V, and this is F, and this is just T. That's an element of the dual space. And in particular, to emphasize that the codomain is F, we write F instead of T. So press F to press T. And this f is what's called a linear functional. Functional it has to do with something called functional analysis. And also to emphasize, it's basically a function, right? It's a function from a vector space to the field that is linear. And today I'll just give you some examples of functionals and some generalities. So here's the first example of a linear functional. Let's see if I have it. Let's suppose we have V being R3 and define F from V to R. Simply F of X, Y, Z is 2X minus 3Y plus 4Z. Well, look, it is a linear transformation and moreover, it maps to the real numbers so in this case, it is a linear functional. So this works, but there are also more exciting ones. For example, um, if you consider V to be the space of polynomials of degree less than or equal to N, and F goes from Pn to R, and what F does, it takes a polynomial and evaluates it at one, then, you can show it is a linear transformation and the values are in R, so that's completely fine. And just to give an example, if n equals 2, then f of 1 plus 2x plus 3y x squared, it's 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 squared equals 6. So again, I know it's this weird thing, you always say, oh, it's a dual space, it's this weird object. It's really not. It's just a space of linear transformations whose output is in the field. And there are other examples. I don't know, you can take complex numbers and complex conjugation, but what about matrices? V be the set of yeah, M by N matrices over a field, and then F goes from M, M by N, to uh, R, or I guess to your field, whichever this is, and F takes a matrix as an input and spits out the trace of that matrix. So for example, uh, again, if you want the th two by three matrices, F of one, two, three, four, five, six, would just spit out the diagonal entries, the sum of the diagonal entries which is one plus five, which is six. So this is also an example of a linear functional. And there are many other ones. For example, um, one very nice one, you've probably hopefully seen in calculus. I don't know how you could do calculus without it. It's integration. So for example, take, um, the space of, let's say, continuous functions from 0 to 1. So 
d equals to continuous functions from 0 to 1 and define f from v to r to simply be so again the inputs are functions so continuous functions and what f does is just integrates g g of x dx for example let's see what f does to the function e to the x that's integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x dx and that's e to the 1 minus e to the 0 which is 1 so indeed you can check it's a linear transformation and the outputs are in your field so it is a linear functional and in fact you can generalize this so for an example for prime take again let's say the set of functions continuous functions from minus pi to pi and let f map c minus pi to pi to r and if you want f of um, g it's simply you integrate minus pi to pi of uh, g of x let's say cosine of 2x dx let's say divided by pi why is that useful that's what's called the Fourier coefficient so if you replace 2 by m or something it would be the m Fourier coefficient so indeed there is this interplay also between functional analysis so dual spaces and Fourier series which is really cool and there are other examples but let me also focus on some non-examples so what would not be a linear functional maybe here so non-example 5 take f from r3 to r and just f of xyz be x squared plus y squared plus z squared yes it maps into r but here's the problem this is not a linear transformation because it has squares in it. And usually stuff with squares, it's a big no-no in linear algebra. And lastly, here's another example, I guess non-example. F goes from R2 to R2. And F of xy is x plus y and 2x minus y. Yes, in this case, it is a linear transformation. You can check that. But the issue is, the reason it's not a linear functional is because the values are not in R, it's in R2. So it's very important that the values have to be in your field. So this is not an F. Again, F here means, at least for me, it's uh, real numbers or complex numbers. But you could also have more general fields. So we will not consider those kinds of linear transformations. We'll just consider linear transformations from V to the, the field itself. So those are special linear transformations. Now, why am I claiming that V star is like a shadow space of V? So we have V, and then we have V star, which is L of Vf. So the point is, vectors in V here. Vectors, vectors in V star, they're linear functionals. It turns out, at least in finite dimensions, they are isomorphic. So there's a very easy way to going from V to V star. So fact, or I guess that's what I call it. Not fact, more than a fact, miracle. If the dimension of V is finite, so if V is finite dimensional, then V and V star are isomorphic. And here's why. Let me give you a proof that's not satisfying. And in a later video, I'll give you a more satisfying proof. Well, look, let's calculate the dimension of V star. That's the dimension of the set of linear transformations from V to F. And I would like to remind you, uh, linear transformations from V to F, you can think of it almost like M by N matrices. So in general, the dimension of L of Vw 
equals to the dimension of V times the dimension of W. Think like the space of M by N matrices has dimension M times N. And this is just a generalization of this. In particular, since F is a vector space, this equals to the dimension of V times the dimension of F. But F is one dimensional, a basis is just a number one, because you are number one. Uh, also, yeah, because there's just one element in the basis. And so that's the dimension of V times one, which is the dimension of V. So in particular, V and V star have the same dimension, and there's this theorem I've showed in another video that if they have the same dimension, and they're finite dimensional, then they are isomorphic. Therefore, they are like the same. And very wrong in infinite dimensions. Generally, V and V star, they don't have the same dimension. Generally, I think V star is much bigger than V. All right, so I will stop now because the next video I'll do, I'll actually find a better way of showing that V and V star are isomorphic. But if you like that, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.